about how to find out whether the phi that we talked about in the non-stationary series is 1 or not. Okay. So in a, in a stochastic train series uh, that we have just learned, if phi is 1, then we are sure it's a random walk process. And that's what we call it unit root. And we need to statistically test that before getting to know. Um, so when we have a stationary system, uh, you know, we know for sure that the effect of any shock that is going to happen to the uh, uh, the time series will die out gradually. Okay, in a stationary series, if you have a shock, it moves up, it eventually comes down, and then it removes somewhere in the mean, and then even if another there is a shock in upward or whether it's downward, it is if there is a downward shock here, it will again come back. But that's not the case in non-stationary system. In non-stationary system, if there is a shock, okay, if 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 something goes up, it never comes down to the mean, okay. So it never approaches the long-run mean, okay. So that's one aspect of uh, you know uh, a, a non-stationary series, and from there we can derive a mode, uh, we can derive some sort of a clue as to how we can you know find out if there is presence of unit root. That means whether the phi is one or, or not. All right. So there are two types of non-stationary. Okay. One case where you have the you know this case is just one, and the other case is phi is greater than one. We have we just taken beta, just keep changing notations. But you know the second case we of course will ignore for here. So the first case we would like to see when is the case when we have the phi equal to one. And that we can get to know using a uh, Dicky filler test. Okay, so this is a test uh, using which we can find out whether there is presence of unit root or the time series is uh, unit root or not. So unit root is just you know another way of saying that whether it's it's uh, a random walk series or not. All right. So the simplest approach is just to have a year year one series. Okay, yt with the theta, and you have psi of yt minus one. Okay, and we would like to know if psi um, is is sorry is if phi is one or not. Now this is AR one series, right? And we expect phi to be less than one. If it is equal to one, then that's a problem. That's a random box series, right? So the hypothesis testing in the case of a Dicky-Fuller's test is is like this: the uh, modulus of phi is either one. A modulus of phi is less than one, which is the alternative hypothesis. Either this will get accepted, or you know we we'll just uh, you know reject null the null hypothesis, right? Depending on what the test set statistic value is, we can rephrase this to make it better, right? Because you know in a t-test we essentially uh, compare it with the zero or non-zero, right? So we'll make it more simpler. So how you do that? You just subtract the previous time series from it. Okay, so we have yt equal to, um, you know, yt is uh, theta, um, theta one, let's say, minus, um, sorry, uh, phi one, uh, yt minus one. Sorry, I think we have done something else. Okay. So we have the series yt equal to yt minus uh, 1, this is theta naught plus at. And then what we do is that we simply subtract yt minus 1. So from left and both right, yt minus yt minus 1 equal to uh, theta naught, sorry, phi, uh, so yeah, this is theta, sorry, theta naught plus yt uh, minus 1. Uh, which is again psi phi here minus yt minus 1 plus at. Okay. Now this is uh, just delta t, right? So delta yt is equal to theta naught plus here we can take yt out. So yt then inside we have 1 minus phi plus at. And then 1 minus phi we just denote uh, with some uh, other. Uh, you know, uh, symbol. Okay. So, uh, so this particular term, if it is equal to zero, then we have unit root. Otherwise, not. So, 
it has now changed. Okay, so null hypothesis is now either it's zero or it's less than zero. Okay, so just you know slight change. You know here we are comparing with one or less than one. Here it is you know either it's zero or less than zero. There are three types of DQ filler test we can do. Uh, I'm not going to the details of it, but depending on the kind of random work we are trying to uh, understand, we'll have different type of DQ filler test. The first case is a pure random work. There is no drift. There is no theta theta term here, right? It's just um, the uh, past value of yt. Okay, so we would like to know if the coefficient is zero or not in this case. The second case we have a drift. Okay, uh, and in the third case we have a drift, and we also have a deterministic time component. Okay, we have theta one t. So time, right? It's the deterministic trend. So it's just a combination of deterministic and stochastic trend. Okay, linear time trend. Okay, so there are three types of Bikefiller test we can do depending on what type of uh, what the intention is. When we can also do uh, all three and see which one is actually uh, is the the best for the given time series data. So how do you uh, find a test statistic and how do you do that? Right? You just apply you know, OLS, you, know, you have the equation, regression equation, you just find, uh, we just estimate the parameters. So parameters here is, is phi, right? We remember it's one minus phi, you know, we just change it to different symbol, but you know, ultimately we're trying to find out what phi is. So we can find that out using OLS, and then we can find out the t statistics. Okay, we can find out the t statistics, and then we see, um, you know, uh, whether it's significant or not, given for a given particular value. Okay, so that's how you will get to know uh, if a particular time series is uh, is a unit root case or not. And if that is the case, you will be able to find out whether it's it's a typical random work or not. In such a case, you know, the limitations of time series methods uh, won't allow you to, let's say, you know, forecast future. You would rather take more of a guess depending on the past values of, of the time series rather than, you know, doing some sort of analysis that is, uh, you know, not going to give any accurate result. So that's one of the, you know, test, important tests that people do before even starting to you know explore other uh, time series models for forecasting and it's, it's quite important early enough if you get to know if it's, it's a particular time series is random work then you do not go ahead with any of this any of this uh, you know sophisticated methods uh, you will be saving uh, a lot of time uh, in doing in doing that